Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I will call the Budget, Finance, and Investment Committee to order. Uh, our first item on our agenda is to approve minutes of our last meeting. So moved. Second. Commissioner Jordan and seconded by Commissioner Schaefer. Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Uh, gentlemen, if you will locate our investment report, uh, Mr. Beatty um, said there was no activity, uh, no bids taken in August. And as you can see, the LGIP rate uh, stays at 0 0.10. So that is a very abbreviated uh, investment report. Most to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Sorry. Sandler. And seconded by Commissioner Jernigan. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, please locate your fund condition report. Oh, that, thank you for reminding me. Uh, Mr. Mitchell uh, had requested uh, to uh, uh, be moved up on the agenda because he has a conflict. So, Mr. Mitchell, if you will uh, come to the table. Uh, and his request is number seven on our agenda. And his request is to submit an application for the Clean Tennessee Energy Grant Program. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the, the Clean Energy Grant Program is a, uh, a grant that is managed by TDEC uh, for clean energy purposes. The city of Kingsport utilized the grant last year to purchase a couple of Nissan Leafs. Uh, and I would like permission to uh, submit an application to be able to submit a grant. Uh, this is kind of a different process. Uh, instead of just going out and submitting the grant, you have to request permission from TDEC to submit a grant. So what I'm asking for is permission to submit the application that if they approve it, then to submit the grant. <laughs> permission to ask permission. His permission to ask permission. <laughs> Will you be asking for a leaf or is this something? Um, or does it, it would be to a, the, the vehicle that we've we've looked at, we've test driven a, a couple of them. Uh, there's a vehicle called a Ford C-Max that is a hybrid. It doesn't require being plugged in. Uh, it's about 42 miles per gallon. Any driving under 25 miles an hour, it operates 100% electric. So for the majority of what our department does, which is a lot of low speed driving through neighborhoods, start and stop. For the majority of the time it's in the neighborhood, it's going to be operating off of 100% electric power. Uh, it would save us tremendously if we could put some of that in on, on our fuel budget. Uh, it would also help out since the county is currently not in clean air compliance. It would, it would, it would move toward, toward showing that we, we are doing what we can as a, as a county government to be in compliance. We are in compliance. They just haven't released us. Well, that's good. So your request is just is for permission to, permission submit, to submit a grant right. request. Is there any kind of matching funds required? Uh, it's it's a I call to buy one get one. It's fifty fifty match. If we buy a vehicle, they'll give us money to get an album. Okay. Motion to approve the request and also permission. For the mayor or whoever needs to to sign for permission to get permission. <laughs> 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 would you like to go ahead and give them permission to to apply for the grant? That's that's what my motion is. <coughs> to to pre-approve and apply for the grant if well, he gets. Well, we can add that too. Yes. That's what, there's no need to come to me. Come back to to say, oh yeah, we we can. can we? Well, when do you, if, okay, if you get approved, if we're doing them both at once, and he gets approved for it, approved well, where's to apply, the money? To well, apply for the grant. Okay. Yeah. So he's saying he's approved for the TDEC and then to apply and, also and if he gets that approved. Grant. Right. But then okay. it comes Still back to us back. to approve because it, it could approve $5.8 million. And According to well, what the match would be. Yeah, we don't want to do right. it. You know, and last year's, that much. Last year's <laughs> information, and, and of course you don't know what this year's information is going to be, but last year's the maximum grant award was two hundred fifty thousand. I mean, so I'm sure he'll. No, there's no way I would want to have five hundred thousand dollars worth of vehicles. Uh, the, the nice thing about this, to think about if if we 
if the county does have an additional need of the vehicles that we replace, we're going to give to the rest of the county. We'll give it to another county department. So that will be an additional purchase that if the ambulance service or somebody is going to have to go out and say, well, I need another vehicle. Okay, we've got the vehicles that we can shift over because it's county property. We'll simply shift it over to them. So that eliminates an additional cost. So Commissioner P, thank you for your motion. Are we clear on what your motion is? <laughs> I'm clear. Okay. And I'll we did not we did I'll not second. get a second. I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner Schaefer. But it will come back here before we actually accept it, but we'll have to come right. up with the money for right. the match right. Right. and vote on it at that point. Right. right. That's what I was saying. And I, I guess I have a question. Are, are, are you anticipating doing buy one, get one, buy two, yep. get two? Right. If we, if, we, if we buy one, they're going to give us another one. No, but when you How apply, many you buy? <laughs> what is your... Well, you could just get one and pay for yeah. half of it. You know, yeah. you know, yeah. so. I, I'm thinking that we'd buy one and get two. Uh, you know, that will give us a good test on it. Okay. Um, we can give a good sample on, on whether or not we really want to move forward in the future with, with going an all hybrid. Well, you're having to put a dollar amount to this request, right? Uh, First one, yeah. Pardon me? One vehicle would be $25,000 or less. Okay, so you're applying for 25000 then, or are you applying for fifty? That's what I'm asking, I guess. What are you, what you're actually uh, applying for? Probably 25000 Okay. And then if you got it, when, how long can you sit with it before, <coughs> before you got to, you know, pay for the other one is what I'm getting at. You, do get, you, you, get, do you, get, the same, you get the same time. They well, the does it come out of uh, unassigned fund balance is where it's going to come from or is it going to come out of next year's budget or? Well, is what I meant. I, how long? If, we just had one with the sheriff that we don't know how, yeah. I don't know, the fire people. It's going to take a year just to get through the process, right? If you, we don't if know how long it's going to take them to approve this application. If you go back, yeah. if I'm on page 3 of 11 of this thing. It just gives you the timeline of what was last year's grant. So it kind of gives you a, by December 1, the pre-proposals, the request mm -hmm. for pre-proposals are released. So January, he's got to have them submitted. Mm -hmm. Then February 15th, full proposals. By invitation only. That's what you're saying. You, right. You'll know then in February when, assuming they use the right. same right. thing. Awards are to be announced by late spring 2013. That's so we'll be doing 2014. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll be doing budget next year's budget. Yeah. We could include right. if it's on the same vehicles. scale. Yeah. And then yeah. so you'll know in time if you get that. So you get two vehicles, and we're going to hear from Paws wanting a vehicle every year, but those. Some of those Jeeps you have to go to pause, is what you're saying. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, fund condition report, and we will begin with the de uh, uh, development tax report. In August, we received $182,250. That brings our year-to-date total to $589,500. And if we are ready to move on to uh, cash balances. My cash balances. What's the... Um amount you projected two and a half million two and a half two and a half two million more to go <laughs> <laughs> well thanks for that ten months ago <laughs> <laughs> okay at the end of august um our total cash balance was a hundred and forty four million nine hundred ninety three thousand six twenty five with operating funds being $139,878,000, borrowed funds $5,457,000. Okay, I got something I need to correct on that. Because the bottom line title says 145, and it should say 144. There's some little something There's wrong a little there. Part. I'll fix it. 14. It does <laughs> add to 144. Oh. Mm -hmm. I think. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. No, we have to have Yeah, I've got to figure out. I'll, I'll check that, see okay. which one's right. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> On the public safety communication projects, shows a negative. We got the reimbursement from E911 for their 
first installment of their million dollar grant to the county. We got it the first <coughs> operating day of September. So it will reflect at the end of this month. It's not a negative cash balance right now. That's Rachel's place again. I forgot one. It's paving the road. It's paving the road to the bond. Oh it's yeah, fine. yeah. Subdivision gotcha. House. Subdivision. That That's the subdivision name. Yeah. Three yeah. Of those. Well, is twelve corners done? Because it's only got five thousand left in it, or is it is it owed something more? I think it's, it's covered. It's accepted by the road board, so we can release this money back. <coughs> okay. We will await until you tell us. But we should have completed the work on the uh, paving by, by now. You think on that one? Mm. Okay. And on the revenue, there's there's um, not a lot of activity in some of these revenues. It's only one month reporting in some. There's uh, two months reporting. There's nothing to get excited about, and there's nothing to worry about at this point in time. No excitement, no worrying. That's always good. <coughs> smiley faces all the way. Well, you didn't get any smiley faces because I'd. <laughs> I'd be excited about smiley faces. <laughs> we have stoic faces all the way. Right. That's a good way to put it. Gentlemen, we need a motion on the um, fund condition report. Thank you, Commissioner Jernigan. Second motion. Seconded by Com Commissioner Sandlin. All in favor, please say aye. <coughs> aye. Opposed? Thank you. Risk <coughs> management, uh, and we have just financial report from risk management, and Mrs. Nolan will be uh, presenting that tonight for us. Okay. I get to where I can read it. Um, the per employee per month based on the medical enrollment for just the medical portion of uh, the insurance fund, that's where I'm starting with, the health insurance fund um, was $796.68 for the month. That brings our total average for the two months reporting at $840.85. That compares favorably to last year at this time when the average was $939.59. When you roll in the on-site medical, the average for the two-month period is $883.32 compared to um, $972.47. The two months reporting last year. Document three of five presents the revenues and expenditures based on a calendar year, not our fiscal year, but the calendar year basis. And we're showing uh, a deficit where mm -hmm. our revenues are under our expenditures by $833,637. We've got four more months of activity. On the OJI workers, the workers comp fund, our total claims for two months reporting is $74,990.70. That's 0.38% of our year to date total for last year. Thirty-eight percent. Yeah. Is that oh, point sorry. Three eight is point three eight. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, it's not big, point three eight. Thirty-eight percent. There's a big variation between those two numbers. Sorry. <laughs> That's What's a drop it? in a bucket, or it's a third. Thirty-eight <laughs> percent. Sorry. You know how those finance tricks are. What's a decimal here? There, there. There. Points, what's, <laughs> a point? what's a few more zeros? <laughs> but just remember, numbers don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> It may not balance. <laughs> I'd like to ask a question about what we went over last month. I hope Ms. Nolan maybe knows it. But in the new wellness uh, thing that all the employees are going to have to get, 
okay, it calls it a lipid test. What is the difference between a lipid test and the HRA test they used to get? Do you know? My understanding, the lipid test is this, just your, <coughs> what do you call it, cholesterol testing. Oh, is that it? Okay, because the other all they checked was for, unless you ask them to do more, was H, uh, was diabetes and cholesterol. That's why, okay, so the lipid is just cholesterol. Well, I'm, is that right? I no. Don't, I don't think that's necessarily correct. I think we better wait till we get okay. a definitive answer yeah, before I thought, we I thought it was I just, body she, mass she index the was coming that, in. That, too, that is like the, the like, but I mean, we know no, it's just a blood draw. I know it's just a blood draw. It doesn't do with your weight or anything like that. part of all this process, and I would be pretty sure they're getting that in their. If you had an HRA, does that count the same as this? If you had it, it said February 17th, the last year or two. Uh, but it needs to come from LabCorp or Quest. I mean, it needs to. Well, it can go through MedPoint if you got or it. Or MedPoint. Yeah. And the other places, you got to have them send it to the lab court. Right? Right. I think you can get well, it. Not to them. Yeah, yeah. but it's just where you send it to them, not, yeah. not to the not insurance. Not to us, but not to, not to, us. to the <laughs> county. But, yeah, but, <laughs> but if you've been to, like Joe Frank said, if you've been to your doctor and had a physical or had a blood draw, they can use that to make a phone call and get them to send that information to us. They have that code. Yeah, but it is doable. We did that. We talked about on the insurance committee that if somebody's already had this at their five private physician, you know, there's a high probability it'll work. But now, it, maybe but, not everyone exactly, but but the critical thing is don't send it to the insurance department. No, well, <laughs> they can, yeah, the, there's going to be plenty of information out there to yeah. tell people how to do that. Well, the Whatever board of education's on. already got. They've sent it out from personnel. That's why I was asking some of those questions, and uh, you know, I'm sure that there's a myriad out there. Maybe we can ask somebody from the board of education what they <coughs> their questions were from them. Can we do that, I'll Madam Chairman? <laughs> no. Well, I mean, people want to know: Can they get it now? They got to <coughs> wait. No, they can get it now. They get it now. They They've all received that information. Every single employee already has. The, the recommendation was to take that printout with them if they're going to get it now. If they haven't already had it done, take that printout to your physician or to the MedPoint clinic and give it to them. You're so talking about that letter that the insurance yes. department. Do you have anything? Yes, the one that was sent out to all employees. Because it has that code in there. Okay. I talked to Ms. Stanson about this the other day, and she told me this was still, uh, with the phrase, but it was still in the works, that everything hadn't been completed. Part of it is some of the labs automatically will send them just the information they need, and some of them don't. You know, some that you've already got, if you've got a hard copy of it, you know, that'll suffice. But like I said, it's still in the works. So things aren't finalized on it when I talked to her yesterday or maybe it was the day before but like I said uh, they'll get it straight now and get us the information okay any further discussion gentlemen we need um, a motion for acceptance of the uh, financial report from risk management motion to approve the report. thank you commissioner P uh -huh. seconded by commissioner <coughs> Jay. all in favor please say aye aye opposed thank you Okay, we're ready for the general fund budget amendments, and our first request is from the election commission. <coughs> Miss Lester, good evening. Good evening. How are you all? Doing? <coughs> <laughs> I, I have to display my sign. Uh, September has been declared as National Voter Registration Month. And you got your photo ID. That. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, we are promoting voter registration during the month of September. And they all, you all are registered to vote, so we're excited about that. The uh, general fund amendment, we were planning this at budget time back in January and February when we started preparing our budget. We knew that this was coming down the pike, but we just didn't know the dollar amount. In the past several years, Rutherford County has been leasing voting machines through microvote corporation, uh, 
because we only own 150 machines and due to the large population and growth in Rutherford County, that's not enough to service our entire county. So this past election cycle, we leased an additional 146 machines. The reason that they were being leased versus having been purchased was due to the Voter Confidence Act, and it was just part of the Tennessee Code Annotated, where everyone thought that it was going to become law that you had to have optical scan voting machines, which is a totally different type of voting machine. So they didn't want to go and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to purchase extra voting machines for the counties when they might become obsolete based on the law. Now that that part of the law has been repealed, uh, you know, we're safe to continue using the voting machines that we currently had invested in already. So we are requesting approval for a $364,350 increase to our budget to provide for these voting machines. Now that will be paid to the county penny for penny. There's no obligation on the part of the county for any kind of matching or, or anything else. This is part of the PAGA grant, that's federal grant money, and we just basically need to seek your permission to amend our budget so that Mayor Burgess can sign the grant contract um, when we get everything approved. In addition to that, every so many years, uh, the state election office also has grant money available to provide each of the 95 counties with a computer, a new computer, and they have, uh, they're doing that, they're in the process of doing that for this year, and we just received the dollar amount for that, which is $1,539.61. So that will be a separate grant, but they're gonna be working on those grants at the same time. So we anticipate having all the paperwork ready for those around the same time for both grants. <coughs> and again, it is a penny for penny reimbursement. We're not paying anything out. So is this for to this is to apply for no. the grant. No, we We've already received it. Just to accept it. Okay, to accept it. <coughs> but the other grant you're talking about has it been awarded also? For they the were computer? supposed. When I started the job in May of 2011, they told me <coughs> to get a new computer that year. They had the money. But they didn't, with redistricting and everything going on, they didn't have the time to actually shop and decide what they wanted to buy on contract. And now that the 2012 elections are over, two years down the road, they're just now getting around to getting the equipment to us. So it was. Is this equipment to coming to you? Will be, is the equipment it will being be delivered to you? It will be delivered to us. We're not paying for anything. Correct. Okay. We already have one in our office that's probably five or six years old that was delivered to us by the state, and it's just basically it's a gift. So we, we own it free and clear. Okay. There's no amendment coming. We just need to know that you got it and we'll tag it. Right. <laughs> we'll contact inventory. <laughs> well, a motion to approve the grant of $364,350 in for Mayor to do all the signature needed. Second. Okay, uh, thank you, Commissioner Sannon. That was seconded by Commissioner Schaefer. Commissioner P, did you have a question? I, I do. <clears throat> One thing I want to start off by saying is I'm in favor of us buying these machines. Uh, some of the worst chewings out I've ever gotten was people that waited in line about two or three hours and then couldn't vote. Uh, and people get really unhappy when they're not able to vote. Now, we we'll always want to make that available to them. But I want to make sure that we spend in this money that we're not going to have a last minute change and these are going to be obsolete. You know, there one time there was going to be a paper trail and you know, that's why we've held off on it, as you noted. Right. So you're sure that To reassure <coughs> you, uh, Microvote is, they're the first company of all the voting machine companies that actually got approved to the latest, greatest standards by the EAC, which is the federal commission that oversees voting machine standards. And uh, for direct recording electronic voting machines, which is the type we have, we abbreviate that, call them DREs. For DREs, Microvote was the only company in the nation to have approved machines to the latest, greatest standards up until recently. I think there's another company that has now sought and obtained approval on those. But we actually just had all 150 of our county-owned machines already picked up and upgraded. They, they completely did a factory refurbish on them down to the plastic cases. If some of the plastic cases had yellowed or discolored for any reason, they replaced the case, even though it was completely functional and nothing was wrong with it. 
they used to be, um, they used to have double, uh, let's say, double redundant vote recording, which means that their votes are recorded in three different places inside each and every voting machine. Now they're actually triple redundant. So they have three. So if I vote once, I get three votes. Depends on what district you're in. This is that just means that your vote will definitely be counted yeah. in there. With, with four different locations in the machine, if something happened to one of those, you know, hard drives, or it's actually more like a solid state memory is what it is, and those just don't go bad. But there's actually four locations within each machine where the where the data is stored, and um, so these have been completely factory refurbished in addition to the 146. Plus, the county has gotten an eight-year parts and labor warranty. So this will take us through the next two presidential election cycles and every election in between. So it's about 16 elections for over the next eight years. So when we go to vote next, we don't really uh, have to look forward to learning the new machine. Correct. We basically it's, get the same it's gonna look the same. The only procedure. difference is if, if you have a, a Kindle or if you read eBooks, sometimes like on your screen, on your display right now, you have a white background with dark writing on it. Um, there's new screens that have replaced the old screen. You know like a calculator screen has the old LCD, it's kind of a greenish background and then the kind of gray looking letters. That's how the old screens were, but the new screens are a dark background with a white print that really stands out. And a lot of voters commented to us that they could actually see that display a whole lot better. So all of the machines have the new screens now. So they've been completely refurbished from top to bottom, inside and out. In addition to the actual tabulation software, we got a new um, a new laptop computer in addition to the one that we had that's also been refurbished and completely upgraded with new software in addition to the actual PC tower that we have in our office. So all of the whole voting system has been completely upgraded to the latest, greatest standards. So this is not a pig in the hope. We're ready to go. <laughs> we are ready Thank to you. go. So we've got 146 machines that are going to last us at least eight years. We have 296 machines. With the other 150. Yes. Really. And, you're right. and the 150 have been refurbished. Completely. So, the 146 also. Any further discussion relative to the motion, gentlemen? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Jarnigan? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Sandlin? Aye. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Ely? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Hill? Just another voting experience. Another vote. Gentlemen, our next uh, budget um, amendment is from Planning and Engineering. Uh, welcome, Mr. Hill. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, tonight I have before you a uh, budget amendment to move uh, $11,000 from data processing equipment to uh, in service training. And uh, this goes along with. Uh, we worked in conjunction with OIT and GIS earlier in the year to uh, purchase a new AutoCAD system. And so we're upgrading our 13-year-old AutoCAD system. Uh, this training goes along with that to train six people, partially in engineering and partially in OIT. Uh, these six full days, actually two three-day sessions. And so uh, the money's in data processing, but it needs to be an in-service to use it. Right? Where is it at? Location? Uh, training here. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're, they're coming here and be in our meeting. Motion to approve. Motion. Commissioner Sandlin, seconded by Commissioner Jernigan. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Sandlin? Aye. Commissioner <laughs> Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Ely? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Tuggle from Agriculture Extension. Good evening. Good evening. And uh, your uh, request, please. We're requesting to move uh, from our rent fund, AGR line, $100,000. Uh, there's all the funds collected through our rent of our, all of our facilities on site. Uh, we work with the conservation board. They are looking to purchase uh, livestock panel for our livestock barn. Uh, we'll be going back before purchasing on the 17th. So we select those also look to replace the roof on our uh, main facility. Which will estimate we have now around $80,000. How old is that facility, Anthony? <laughs> About nine years. Are we looking at what happened to that roof and hopefully going through something different? Because it's a it's a shingle roof, is it mm -hmm. not? I mean, a shingle roof on a house, you just without 
without a storm or something. It usually yeah. lasts 20 years around that vicinity. So are we going back with the same roof or? Well, and looking back, and looking at we had several, three different companies come in and look and kind of talk to us about the roof. Uh, one, they all seemed that it wasn't done properly. Uh, and also, there was some wind and hail damage that happened at some point. We didn't get it all, but we had leaks and damage and bumper and stuff now, so we're really still trying to repair. We did have one major repair now, one, one major. <coughs> so we're still trying to continue to repair. I guess it's too far to go, long ago to go back. I'll never put the roof on, but. Yeah. So I'm going to make sure and use a company that does it correctly this time, we're, hopefully. We're talking with Ben, he's working with, I think we end up having an engineer on site to work through and to uh, oversee the project and get that done once we get the uh, big specs and all that done. Yeah. Is there a possible way we can go metal work? Well, yeah, you can do it. I don't know. We're talking about a lot more expensive. Mm -hmm. Probably. More expensive, they last for They last for yeah. a long but, but, time. I mean, I've got some houses that got hail damage 10 years ago and I haven't replaced those roofs yet <laughs> you know and and they were four or five year old roofs at the time so nine years is just ridiculous yeah. um they don't sell a shingle that's bad enough that don't last nine years yeah. you know even if you buy the cheapest one out there but I hope we look at that and do whatever upgrades are necessary that we're not doing it again in nine or ten more years is this something, since you're saying there's hail damage, that could go to insurance or is it deductible out of sight? So it no, we, from time to time we do collect some hail damage and we have some over the public, but I don't know how, if we've got any hail damage. Yeah. Yeah. We, so we did have some, we weren't collected off our building and talking with the insurance on I don't know how far to go back and when it was done. Uh, and also it's below. Less than nine years, in case you wondered. <laughs> yeah, but, but they right. don't know which event. Which event caused the hurt? Does it matter? matter? Don't we have a hundred thousand dollar deductible on hail damage anyway? Well, we don't meet the hundred thousand dollars. Well, well, usually one less you can group it into work. But well, we did. Or another storm came through. through before you get some. I know what with the uh, Paul's building and we control even just recently. Our building was skilled somehow. I don't understand. You would think if Paul's got mm -hmm. hail damage, you'd be pretty likely also. <laughs> being the two buildings are. <laughs> 200 feet apart, mm -hmm. something like that. Or is there any way you can check on that for us, or Mayor? I, I can check with Melissa and her team. And I mean, if there's a possibility for us to collect it, let's do it. So. Hopefully, we can look into that, you know, and but we, in my opinion, we can still approve this and move forward, and hopefully, we can get some, <coughs> some, well, we, some money back. When the engineer <coughs> does, writes these specs, you know, I, I don't know if it's going to be a 100%. Replacement or whether it's going to be some combination thereof, um, lesser these and just replace certain damaged material, etc. I don't know. But that estimate we have here to cover the entire the building. Whole thing, the whole thing. So hopefully, this would be the upside of it. And this is the money that's brought in through rentals and mm -hmm. is supposed to stay out there on the facility, you know, and is staying there. And, then, and I know the Conservation Board won't spend a penny more than they have to. <laughs> If they can get this done cheaper, they'll leave that money right there and do something else on the property with it. So I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Jordan, seconded by Commissioner P. Any further discussion relative to the motion? Yeah. Could we just ask it when you get the uh, actual estimates and put it out for a bid, just ask for what it is for a metal roof? Just to see. Now we'll have to bid it both ways if you want to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll have to be designed. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, to support that and hold that, etc. Yeah, I mean, the roof may not support it. Okay. Any further discussion? Call the road, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jarnigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Thank you. Uh, from the Correctional Work Center. Mr. Salandi, hello. Uh, we may need to tag team on this Bernard. Okay. Sounds good to me. <laughs> okay. Dr. Rudd, we have contracts with him now at all three of our correctional centers, the, the jail, the work center, and then the juvenile detention center. It's just started, of course, but the net effect of this is between, uh, between the work center and the jail. We owe uh, 58. Dr. Rudd yeah. uh, 50, 
for the previous year, $58,274.66. Is that just the workhouse or is that a combination? That's it's a, a combination. Net. Most of it's a workhouse. Um, he owes us back at the jail about 18000 and we owed him uh, the difference between the $77,000, okay? So we owed seventy-seven more <coughs> towards him, and we owed, we overpaid him at the jail about 18000 so that's where we got the 58000 And that 58000 being the, the number that we think we need to budget for this upcoming year, uh, at the work center, $60,000 more uh, to accommodate what we expect to go, the, the cost is going to be for this uh, this current fiscal year. So that the 60 plus the 58 is what we're asking you to make an amendment for. We budgeted the same amount for 13-14 that we did for 12-13. So when they closed the books for 12-13, Dr. Rudd and, and then found out what their true expenses were, that's what, that's that settling up, that 58000 So now that we know we've got a year of history, looking at that, it's going to cost additional $500 a month for the next year. So when we got this, we got this settled down, you think now, I mean, we, we've got all three of them on, the juvenile also. Is that right? Juvenile is, is a flat number. It, it won't be an adjustment. So their number. They're going to pay their number based on their census, and it won't be an adjustment. It's a whole lot less money. I know this is like the second year <coughs> we've run into this same thing. It'll, it'll be the same thing every year. We'll have an adjustment every year. When we get their 12 months worth of data, we'll review it and see how that fits in with the contractual agreement we have, and then we have to make the adjustment. What was the adjustment at this time last year? We didn't have one because it this twelve thirteen I think was our first full year. Was it the first? Yeah, they we just signed on. Yeah, uh, and they were <coughs> as far as they went. Well, I think that year the discussion was the way the billing was done. I think that one of the departments was charged all of it. You weren't charged any, and then you needed to, if my memory serves me correctly. But and we've, they've been independent. I mean, the sheriff has had them out there many years. But, uh, right before we got, before we even got them. But that yeah. was. That was a company prior to Dr. Rudd. Okay. That was a company, and you're right. At that time, that so that remember, yes. yeah, they were doing they were doing the juvenile. No, they were even doing. They juvenile. had it by, by the time <coughs> and, and the work center. They but the work center was getting all the bills right. for both facilities. That's what I think you're remembering. Right. If we had to split out. So if we budgeted it for the current fiscal year the same as we get last fiscal year, right. it turns out we're fifty eight thousand two seventy four short. That means we probably budgeted too light this year. And that's that's the reason that's we why we're, not, we're, yes, that's well, why we're doing the additional. <laughs> yeah, but, that, but that only fixed it last year. It, well, no, we're, no, no, actually no, we're doing that we're doing that double like we're doing both of them. Right, yeah. Yeah, we're at yeah. I was looking at one number yeah, that's why it's twice that much. How to pay the bills? Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner you. Jordan. I'll second that, and he's right. I mean, we approve the bills, we've got to pay them. Seconded by Commissioner P. So, if um, <clears throat> at the end of fiscal year, they'll be looking at Dr. Rudd will look, and you'll be looking at his expenses again, and if it comes out less than this, we'll get some back on the workhouse. Yes, sir. And then next year, I mean, okay. we won't know until after we've adopted the budget, but we'll probably budget. At this 460,000 amount. Okay. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why, but it sounds, it's a lot simpler to understand tonight than it was a public safety. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, we might have explained it better. Yeah, second time around, we did a better job. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Shaker. Yes. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Thank you. Uh, uh, from the Sheriff's Department. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mr. Runcell. Uh, you have uh, two budget amendments? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we're going to recognize on the revenue account $10,831. And this is left over from the, uh, from the uh, GHSO grant funds from the, from the prior budget year. And we're going to break that down into 9000 of overtime and related benefits. 
And then the second one we're requesting to, uh, this is from all of our remaining money that was uh, from all of our donated funds from last year. Uh, this is what the remaining balance after we closed out the year of uh, $5,658. And we're going to put that into our other contracts so I can break that out to all the different department budgets for the for the things like canine and explore and shop with sheriff. That's all I got for these. Commissioner Jernigan, thank you. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Schaefer. So which one out of this mounted patrol out of here? It's not on this one, is it? No. It's not on. So tell me about the leftover 10,831. Uh, you know the, um, the Governor's Highway Safety Office grants that we get every year? For the robots and things. Robots yes. and that kind of stuff. So we, we get that grant money in. What we do is we, we work it, we bill it, they reimburse it. And so we're just... Uh, and that's part of that. This, yeah. this yeah, is so what's it. remaining from okay. last year. Is that had we done, yeah. we would have budgeted in, but sometimes yeah. we just... Well, we don't have any balance. Close. And so we just wait till we close the books. So that's kind of what we decided to do. So. Any further discussion? <coughs> Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ealing. Yes. And Mr. Russell, I understand you have something, uh, an yes. amendment for yes. asset forfeiture, yes. uh, and we do not have information on that because oh, you didn't, you didn't get it in no, in I time. Yeah, it was, it was like <laughs> I was, I was out of yeah, office. These were already uh, loaded so, and yeah. we don't have that. So okay. will you present that's, that, that's please? Uh, okay, so we had asset forfeiture funds of uh, $15,221.33 that were donated to us by some very lovely people. And we're going to put that into our uh, uh, 718 motor vehicles line item on the under the DEA fund of $15,221.33. Move Second. Commissioner Jernigan, thank you. Seconded by Commissioner Sandlin. Call the road, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Eagle. Yes. Thank you. One quick question. Yes, sir. DUI stops, how'd they go this last weekend? I don't have those numbers. Um, it was sure. it smoothly? Did give you that. It was. I don't. I didn't see anything on YouTube, so we must be. <laughs> as far as I know, I haven't seen it because I do look at YouTube. My son will come down and talk about it. Let that play the way. Let that play the way. He's not here. I won't take care. Okay, <laughs> gentlemen, uh, we have uh, an ambulance <laughs> service fund budget amendment, uh, Mayor Burgess. Okay, I'm sure most of you recall that our ambulance director had a vehicle accident. Totaled his vehicle, it didn't injure him, thank goodness. But in any event, here's what we're wanting to do we want to move from the uh, assigned for public health and welfare, the EMS fund balance, $30,468 to replace this vehicle. We've received $15,467 from our insurance company on the value of that wrecked truck, and uh, of that 15 plus an additional 15 will, will replace the, uh, the vehicle. That's our request. Is this truck you got emergency uh, lights and all yes, that on it? Okay. I'm just wondering why thirty thousand just seems high for a truck. So, okay, that, that explains why. Right. Commissioner Jernigan, thank you. Second by seconded by Commissioner Sandlin. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Eagle. Yes. We have a request from juvenile mm -hmm. detention to mm -hmm. reapply for the Title I grant through the Tennessee Alliance for Children and Families. Mrs. Dew. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, you may remember that last year was the first year that we had applied for this Title I grant. Uh, we want to ask permission to apply for it again. Uh, the uh, grant has been reduced by about half. Last year it was a little over 131000 This year it's going to be about seventy-eight, a little more than 78000 um, So we're asking for um, permission to apply and then uh, also to authorize the mayor to accept it if and when it's awarded. And 
Okay. Any other questions I can ask? See the matching cost? Nope, there's, uh, there's no matching. Um, Grant. Motion to approve. Commissioner P, thank you. Sure. Seconded by Commissioner Jernigan. Under the salaries where you got uh, supplemental teachers, yes. uh, clerical personnel, all that sort of stuff, that's people we've already have. Is it supplementing their salary or is part of their salary? No, what, one, what is the one, this is the salary of one full time uh, Title I coordinator. Mm -hmm. And then in this uh, grant, we're also asking for an additional part time educational assistant. <coughs> Any further discussion or questions for Mrs. Duke? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Jarnigan? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Sandlin? Aye. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Ely? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Sandy? <coughs> Mr. Odom? Good evening, gentlemen. Mr. Sandvig and uh, Mr. Odom, we're going to um, sort of break this up into pieces tonight. Uh, if you will start with uh, one through three of your amendments, uh, we'll take that as one vote since that is the, the GPS fund. Okay. Uh, and most of these adjustments are simply line item adjustments that the Department of Education requires us to for reporting line item numbers, and so they're changing line item numbers, is basically what this is. The first one is Spectrum, which is a gifted program, and it is being moved from special education to regular education funding. Um, and the amendment will move one million four hundred ninety-five thousand eight hundred and six in already budgeted expenditures to function seventy-one one hundred regular education from seventy-one two hundred special education to amend one hundred fifteen thousand six seventy-six in already budgeted expenditures to function seventy-two two ten and regular education program from seventy-two two twenty special education program as presented. And this is, we'll try to answer any questions if you have any, but it's, it's line item number changes what it is to report to the state. Um, gifted is not a federal definition under special ed. It is under Tennessee. Um, gifted education is, is under that. It's called spectrum in our district. But um, they're wanting to separate them more in funding that as they report them separately. What uh, grades does Spectrum cover? It, cover it, it covers pre-K uh, up. Pre up. <coughs> we try to take these all together. Uh, one, two, and three okay. uh, one, can two, be three. in one motion okay. uh, because that's the GPS okay. fund. Second one's an energy position, and this was, um, if you remember Gary Clardy, uh, we mentioned some time back we were applying for a grant and received $167,060 <coughs> for allocated to Robert County Schools um, to uh, deal with energy management, to tracking our use of energy, to try to find additional ways to reduce energy. Somebody called the thermostat police. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, and just done a little bit of calculation. We, we, with some of the other things we've done, we are beginning to save some money. It's beginning to show up. So, but anyway, we are uh, wanting to. We have to have a person to do this, and so we're asking to amendment funds of sixty-four thousand nine hundred and eighteen dollars. From the other state revenue account, 46590, to amend this into staff and benefits for this person that would be our systems energy manager, as presented. And um, he was asking Health and Ed um, what happens after this. We hope by this time that we will be saving enough funds that will more than pay for this salary. There's a lot of companies that contact us asking to do energy management for us. But calling those contracts, they uh, want to do the calculations for you and they'll determine what percent you get out of that. It's hundreds of thousands of dollars. So we've got an employee here. If it doesn't work, we can change, move, or whatever we do. We think we can show additional savings in what we're doing. So that's that's the purpose for that. So this is beyond the, the electrical deal and the geothermal that we're doing. This it is, is anything else that and throughout some the system. Of, <coughs> some of this monies will be used for some devices, reporting, recording devices on energy usage. You know, one of the big things, and most of you understand, is your demand charge. Mm -hmm. In other words, are we, you pay, you pay on commercial based upon whatever your highest demand is for the month. 
And so we need to do a better tracking of that demand to make sure that with our computer system it's staggered on time so that you don't have all the demand at one time and that. So this is the kind of things a person looks at to try to save you additional funds. So that's, that's what we're trying to do. This is big business. Yeah. It is I big mean, business. Uh, most people don't realize that, uh, and I've said this in health and a school or commercial building isn't like your house. Right. You don't pay on how much electricity you use. I remember right. you, back in the 80s, back when my father was on the school board, there would talk it was cheaper to leave the heat on on the, mm -hmm. in the schools all through the weekends, all through Christmas break and all, because you're paid on peak instead of letting them get cut the terms of down and crank it up Sunday night or Monday morning, and you got to run a big bill. It, it runs a high usage, and then your bill goes through the roof. It doesn't make any sense, but that's the way the system is set up. You know, so you don't pay on what you use. You pay on whatever the most demand is, and and uh, so if somebody can coordinate turning off some water heaters when this air conditioner comes on, different things, it can save the county literally hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't agree with the system. But <laughs> 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 You're in the position well. to make some changes. Yeah. Yeah. You got go to you gotta go to Washington and make those changes. <laughs> Um, or something. Yeah, okay. The third item is career ladder. Career ladder started in the um, 1980s, if you remember. Mm -hmm. uh, people retire and leave. It is uh, tracking down, but again, they're changing line item numbers if you take a look at that. To reduce career ladder extended contract revenue account 46612 related career ladder expenditure by 37507. And to reclassify the superintendent's chief operating, operating officer supplement as presented. And I mentioned in health and ed too, because the, the directors of schools do not work directly with the state and local school boards to try to get directors of schools to go to additional state trainings, they do what they call CEO credits, which most of you are probably familiar with. And so what you gotta do, if you attend and get your hours and CEO credit, Mr. Gill did this, I did it last year, they send one thousand dollars additional through to pass through for that. But it's, it's an incentive to get people to attend. Okay, those three, um, th those three amendments for the GPS fund, gentlemen. Motion to approve the amendments. Commissioner Schaefer, thank you. Sure. Seconded by Commissioner Jernigan. Any further discussions or questions for uh, Mr. Odom? Just one simple one, but it's more for Jeff, I guess. Uh, roughly how much do we pay out in career ladder? Yeah. It's shrinking every year, yeah, right? Maybe. I think it's under a million. It's spread across several functions, <coughs> but yeah, it, it every couple of years I drop it a few more hundred thousand dollars, and extended contract is plummeted, which is another bucket of money. That would just be six times what it is. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jarnigan. Yes. Commissioner Jerd. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Gentlemen, uh, the next uh, amendment is Capital Projects Fund 177. So we will we will need to take this as a separate motion, uh, Mr. Odom. Okay. And this is you realize that, of course the end of June 30th we have to liquidate any uh, POs that we have and reapply again for January or July 1. So. What we have in this particular amendment, we have a total of each of those items listed, Smyrna Laverne Stadium seating, Smyrna Middle Roofing, Central Office Paving, Repairs to Angie Road at Wilson Elementary, and that total is 416184 from the Capital Project Fund in order to complete those 2012-13 projects as presented. So it's just reissuing those purchase orders to complete them <coughs> across that date. When are they going to be finished? Um, most of those, uh, the stadium seating is a little bit, the concrete pads forward, uh, some of the seating, that's a, it's a, a metal seating and all of that. That was ADA compliance and stuff, if you remember that. Um, I think I think maybe the repairs to Angie Road at Wilson was patched. Um, we'd be glad to give that to the road department if you want to. Angie Road was that road that came off of Jefferson Pike that went in and belongs to the school system. So. The heavy construction out there with the housing and all has worked that road over. It was never really designed to handle that, but it's still ours, and so we're having to make repairs for that. Uh, central office paving, patching basically is done, I think, at this particular point. And I'm not sure exactly where on this morning we're going to be. 
Yes. I'm not exactly sure on that. But we withhold some sometimes for a little while too, which could catch even though we might be almost through with it. Most to approve, my chair. Thank you, Commissioner Sandlin. Sorry. Seconded by Commissioner Jernigan. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Eel. Yes. And, and we're back to general purpose amendments, but these two amendments yes. come from Fund Balance, and these are for textbooks and the Blackman Middle Annex. Um, oh, I'm, I'm just, sorry. I just want to ask, Angie Road, does it have speed bumps on it? Um, maybe right up at the school. Yeah, John, 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 just right at the school. school. No, I'm just wondering that might slow the heavy trucks down. In Smyrna Middle, r roughly how old is it? 1975? Mm -hmm. Smyrna High was there. So yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, gosh, I'm afraid to say. Well, somewhere back around yeah, 1960. Yeah. Okay. It's not uncommon to use a for 50, 60 years or so. Yeah. Yeah. You know, do a good well, job. Well, the 1960s. Make repairs. We work on that 60. Uh, Mr. Odom, the general purpose amendments from fund balance. Okay, this the first one is textbooks, and this is anticipation actually, um, and we're wanting to take one million two hundred fifty thousand from the unassigned fund balance to place in a 2014 budget for textbooks. What we discovered when we purchased textbooks this year, which is the reading adoption, which is usually not one of the largest, the, the cost has gone up again quite dramatically. The we purchase textbooks typically for the next year in June so that they will be in place in August. Most are through Tennessee Book Company, that the vendor that handles it. So this will be purchasing social studies books that will actually begin to be used in the 14-15 school year. But we found out, and as Jeff did the calculation and saw that we um, actually had some trouble uh, with that. We're going to be short. We, we thought we better go ahead and anticipate and move 1200000 for a regular education textbook, which will be basically social studies and any growth. And we have growth, and we had, uh, as of today, um, 1387 over the ending date last year. 1387 How much that, is that from this date last year? Um, and an even larger still, number than that. Um, you have some that graduate early and some things that you do, hunger <coughs> graduate them early and some things like that. You will have some dropouts mm -hmm. and all. I, I'm thinking it was 11 to 1,200, something like that. It's still up. One of our largest years, I believe, was 2006. It was almost 1,600, I think, Mr. Gill was there that year. Uh, last year was uh, 1,012, and the year before that, when we kind of had the recession, was 519. I remember that figure. So we approached 1900s, what yeah. back around the yeah. five, six mm -hmm. time frame. So we have a little over 41,000 basically now. So. Well, that's just a bunch of time. That's a school a year. 1,100 students is a, is a, is a elementary school oh, or yeah. plus. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. And actually, it's a middle school size, if yeah. you know. True. So, so this is an anticipation of purchasing growth and increased cost of textbooks, basically. Um, haven't been ordered yet. We don't exactly know the price. The books haven't even been selected, but we know that we're going to be short in that line item. So it's an accounting move. Even though it's for next academic year, it's because we're doing this now because the purchase will be made in June before the fiscal year ends. If we and wait till July 1, we will not have the books yeah, when right. the kids start. And you, you, you mentioned this was for social studies books. Was it social studies books only? No, um, it will be social studies and growth and, and, and about 50,000 in career and technical education, which is divided up. Textbooks have a six year cycle, basically, and the state selects that cycle. The year after this, they're actually going to go back and pick up math again after about five years because of, it's off so much now with Common Core and things that's doing. So they tell us which one is in the cycle. Remember, they have a state textbook commission that reviews the textbooks. They send us every all of the books that's uh, been approved by the state. And then we have a total committee that goes in and tries to runs the alignments and all with the standards. And, makes a recommendation to the school board. So how is that money distributed to the individual schools? We purchase this all through the central office, basically whatever textbooks they need. Um, 
basically, but this is all handled through our textbook department. So you go through the accreditation groups, recommendations as far as the books that are needed, or the, you about set your own standards? Uh, no, see, the state <coughs> sets the curriculum standards. So when you get a textbook, what you do is sit down with the textbooks, the textbooks that are being offered. You sit down with your standards and see which ones covered. Now remember, textbooks are published basically for the whole United States. Prior to the Common Core time, the ones that drove the textbooks basically were California, Texas, and Florida. And why? They purchased the most textbooks. So your alignment is not as close. Now with kind of Common Core coming in, since it's, it's the standards are, are more similar, much closer across the United States, I think you'll find the alignment will be much closer as far as the textbooks covering those standards. It seems like they ought to be less expensive then. If, I mean, seems if you're like sending it. a volume. Yes, I think it would help them to do that. Because we do, we do not know, Common Core really do, is, we're beginning to teach it now and all, the first assessment for those really do not occur until 14, 15. So. Yeah, I've still got a couple more. Okay. Still digging on this. Okay. Uh, do you figure one child per textbook? in all your schools? Um, <coughs> not totally. In some of the high schools, we will purchase a class set, especially in a CTE or in some of the English classes or something where it's a literature where it's more of a reference book to be used at that time. Mm -hmm. So in those cases, we'll purchase a classroom set and leave it there. Now, one of the things the textbook companies do for us um, is when you, you purchase the textbook, they will give you the online version too. And so. Uh, students can, we, we have a code, we give them a code for that textbook, and they can go in and look at it online and all, all stuff to do well, that. That's, that's where I was headed with all of this. Is, are the we cost of the online version, if you just bought the online, they do, there's no deduction in, in the, the other. Uh, right now, what you're looking at, and we get this question a lot and work on it with our school board, um, the, the current cost, the last one was Apple was providing the textbook $14.95 per year per book. Well, if you have a six year adoption, you're virtually looking at $90, which for a lot of elementary books, the book doesn't cost more than $90. The, the, the issue for us right now is, then you gotta purchase a device, maintain the batteries and the charging system. Also, we've learned something else. Many of the online textbook are interactive. You have to you click a site, it'll take you to a different site. The nice things about them, they're, they're always updated. If you're studying social studies, it's not out of date in three or four years if a country changes its name because they'll, they'll change it online. But the total cost of that $14.95, the devices, the batteries, the charging system, and we're receiving this $2.1 million grant that kind of came with the Common Core assessment because of bandwidth. And I can tell you we did not have enough bandwidth to handle students hitting this. We, we know that obviously now, but we just absolutely ran out sometimes last year. So all the pieces <coughs> haven't come together. I, well, I, basically when you get one device, though, all the textbooks were their math, history, science, whatever, would go on that one device it would. still. It would. But, okay, that's what I was wondering, because I, I know there's been a push to head, head us in that direction, so. There, the, with the Common Core, there has been a push from the two big companies that are kind of doing the Common Core assessments because there has to be devices to do Common Core assessments to, to work with the hardware companies. The hardware companies would be your Samsungs, your Apples, uh, your Dells, and those sort of people to try to get a competitive spirit in there. What can you offer at a reasonable price to do this with and to maybe load textbooks and all? And, and that just hasn't gelled at this particular point either. It's something we watch. I mean, I know, I know where it's going, but we, it's, it's not there yet, honestly, for us. There's Some still a lot of households out there without internet. Absolutely. Do you have to provide internet for <coughs> those houses, too? There's, there's a question. i got a couple more questions. You said the social studies. Now, is that one that you're going to have one per, set per, uh, per teacher? And on social studies, it seems to me that the whole way through, you could do that pretty much. As opposed um, to the problem with social studies it is it is really from kindergarten up, mm -hmm. whereas reading stops basically in the eighth grade, and so that's why reading is one of our cheaper ones. But but you you pretty well have a book that would be um, um, for most of the elementary children will have a book during this time. Parents really 
Uh, you want school board members to get calls? No, yeah, don't, that's fine. Don't provide if they keep the train. <laughs> <laughs> they keep your budget down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really, like it's it. really one of those. Obviously, they items. do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got a couple uh, more things. You're going with your standardized testing here. I don't know this year and then in a couple of real soon, and mm -hmm. it's all going to be on online in the school. So. Are you going to be able to handle that uh, when it comes, if you can't handle that? Or is it something totally um, different the way it's going to be presented than the bandwidth you were talking about for these school books? The, 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 the one-time grant that came for this year, $2.1 million to Rocky County, we were so fortunate that we got more than Chattanooga and, and Knoxville and some other places. Our people made us really look like we needed it, and we did. Because we haven't been, we really haven't been upgrading technology. We didn't come from special appropriations for several years, so we weren't in good shape. Much of that is going to bandwidth. The next thing in our priority list goes down to um, wireless devices in the schools to do that. And we, we piloted two last year to see which one had the best coverage and that sort of thing. The third piece of that would be devices <coughs> and machines to take the assessment on. And the goal for the state is that you have enough computers and units to test about one third of your students at a time. Now I can tell you that the state is already making plans because you, you've got some upper Cumberland counties and you got some that, I mean we're behind, but you've got some that are way behind. Mm -hmm. So we are, are beginning to be told some that very likely you're going to see some paper and pencil along with the online when this first thing rolls out. And that doesn't surprise me. Well, my Big worry is is it's going to be another one of those unfunded mandates coming down that you got to you got to supply it locally for something that's coming out of a bureaucracy in the state and uh, go through the legislature buried with uh, you know, a lot of other with a lot of other bills together. There's two more of those coming next year that I could tell you about, but you may not want to know about it. So. Hey, hey, one more thing, are, are you good? No. the line here? And I read it in a minute from Health and Ed is. The cost of the reading adoption also increased because the state no longer allows the textbook publishers to give us as many teacher editions as we were able to get in the past. My question here, are we going to build a state because they did that? <laughs> you know, and, and I, I really am not sure why they did that. At one time, it was a very, very highly competitive business between textbook publishers. And they would do something, if you'll buy our textbooks, we'll give you this many extra teacher's editions. There were times that even threw in some of these devices, projector devices and all, mm -hmm. because evidently there's a pretty good margin of profit to textbook mm -hmm. companies in that. And somebody at the state or somebody had the wisdom, no, we don't want people offering additional things. We want the, just the true cost of the textbooks. So you can offer nothing extra with that, put them all on the same. Great, the textbook companies, they really didn't do that on the price of the textbook. Mm -hmm. But all of those amenities <coughs> stopped. So that, that's what you've got. So we have, in some instances now, having to purchase a teacher's edition. We used to get one for about every class of students or something like that. And when you get into special education and ESL in particular, for having fun. for students. So in other words, it is an unfunded mandate from the state. It's something you used to get that you're not getting now. Yes, sir. It may be that you're getting the books cheaper. June 28th, we had to add 448000 to our purchase order because it had not been extended properly to the textbook company. At that point, okay, I was very concerned. At that point, it was, okay, we're dead in the water on next year's budget number. Mm -hmm. And since we did come in good with fund balance, um, we, the last, we spent 3.6 or 3.8 million, I'm not sure which year it was, uh, on the, our last social studies adoption. That was when our growth was substantially higher than it is now. What but percent of that is state textbook growth you think? Can you, you estimate? I, part I of the BEP is textbook right. funds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it never occurs no, at all, but no. part of that is a flow through. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, just in looking at, at our, I, look, I went back to 2003, 2004, 
and looking at our growth and what adoptions we had, I I think this I think we will be independent of this. It's about three quarters of it through yeah. the BEP. I think our funding or is it adoption will be way less. I'm afraid, I'm afraid to guess you're after this. If you had to guess at what percent comes to the BEP, what would you say Mr. Sandalis, is it three quarters or something? No, it's not. I would not even around half or anything. Sixty some. I, I can look that up. For people no, I, I just, I just, for information, I just <coughs> wonder what that was. Thank you. Um, there are some districts in the state that, that have not been able to adopt books. The problem you run into in a six year cycle is very quickly find your students with 12 year old books or something because a new book's going to come the next year. So if you ever get out of track, it's difficult. Well, so. Why with reading and uh, in social studies, those social studies changes what I'm getting at is why has it got to be changed at six years? Why can't it be at eight years? Well, that's the state's adoption cycle. That's the state's adoption that's cycle. The state's they adoption say you got to do it? I mean, well, or is that... You don't have to do it, but here, here's what your, your textbook companies are targeting their new additions in that six-year cycle. So if you wait eight, then you're going to take a book that's not in print much. Now, let me tell you something else that we do. Once we get about three or four years in an adoption cycle, we buy used textbooks if they're available. If they are, if. If they're available, we will buy used textbooks. Mm -hmm. We do that. We take our old textbooks, and we have used textbook publishers that will come and purchase our old textbooks. So we are selling our old ones, and we're buying used after it's years. Now, a new adoption starting out, typically new from the company, they're not used textbooks available to you. Well. Now, Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve these textbooks. Um, okay, <laughs> we, we can take that as a separate motion, or we can, can continue <coughs> with the next Let's one. Let's just go ahead and get that. Okay, out. that is just on. fine. You're going to take care of the textbooks then, right? And that was your motion. Who Who is the second? Joe. Thank you, Commissioner Jernigan. Now, one question to Lisa then. What is that? We've got our next amendment there is coming out of Unassigned fund balance, but I mean, what um, y'all's your school board? So, what, what does that do to us on the 1.2 right there? Because uh, okay. then we've got another 600,000 plus right. on the next one that's okay. mm -hmm. um, on the general purpose school. You know, they have to have a three percent. Mm -hmm. um, we close with the five percent, mm -hmm. so you do have um, just looking straight. At it, you've got about a five million dollar leeway. Okay, well, that's going to take a, a good two out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so if if we do everything here, so we just okay. Hey, gentlemen, uh, any further discussion relative to the motion uh, for textbooks? Call the roll, please. Only two months of the budget, Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner yes. Jarnigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sam. <coughs> Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. No. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Okay, Blackman Middle Annex, Mr. Odom. Okay, this is the good and bad news. The economy is recovering. Because the economy is recovering, the bills came in higher for Blackman Middle School. So that's what we've got. Our two middle schools and Stewart's Creek are really in a good time. Mm -hmm. So it came in roughly in, in the bids 623800 and your difference there is mainly your, uh, as we talked about in health and ed, the original amount for the, the envelope, the, the addition itself was kind of covered, but this is your infrastructure inside, basically what you're doing uh, is, is those costs you got to replace. So what was our the number before? What was, that? what was the number before? That was just a thrown out there, though. This is the actual uh, bid here, right? right. <laughs> this is actual bid. It was in that seven million range, but our that budget number included money for furniture equipment technology. Commissioner Sandlin, my, my chart says seven point four million. Seven point four. But that was everything. That was yeah. that was construction, architecture, everything. So we're looking at another seven hundred thousand now. That's what you're, I mean this well what did it say six twenty three million. <coughs> So our, our request is to 
pull from our ending fund balance of 622,800 so that we can move on this addition. How many were bid on this one? Um, four, the bids four. was R.G. Anderson, Rhino Construction, mm -hmm. Robert Biscayne, mm -hmm. and Sane mm -hmm. Construction. It's like four, something like that. Even this, this. Uh, well, okay. Two of those are built most of the schools in this yeah. county. In yeah. This, this Biscayne, century, Biscayne <laughs> received its seven million sixty-two thousand. The high, and, and the bids ranged anywhere from eight. Well, I think you can see it there from. Eight million ninety-seven thousand down to seven million sixty-two. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Jernigan, thank you. I'm on second the motion. I, I, you know, I, I just, I hate that Biskin did our uh, Stewart's Creek, didn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. High school, our last one. Eighty dollars a square. Mm -hmm. yeah. We do have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or questions uh, relative to this motion? And again, this is my famous statement of turnkey. This is all, everything. It's turnkey now that you've approved this because they right. need that money to do everything inside the building. Yeah. Because <coughs> before it wasn't everything no. inside. Mm -hmm. we, we thought it was. We, we thought we. So what's the biggest difference? What what is it in this six hundred thousand is the biggest difference? I mean that's a, that's a, you know that's a chunk of money. You know, but it's not going to the contractor. They're going to use that for soft clothes and furniture fixtures, equipment. And, uh, oh, well, it's yeah. the construction contract that came in higher. Yeah, yeah. 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 It would take this to finish the. That's what this everything we need inside. Help and help to do it. Before the the amount the original amount should have done both. The actual. The economy's picking up and construction costs are easing back yeah. up. I think I read something that uh, 99 of the 100 largest cities in the country were running about 12, were, have increased over the same month last year in residential this was, and 49 of the 50 states uh, averaged 12.4 percent higher in residential this year than the same month last year. You see, so commercial's going to do the same thing. Any further discussion relative to the motion? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Gentlemen, thank you. The juvenile attention, uh, she's gone now. We've been able to do something that looks like we're going to be able to use our online software for students there. So I, I didn't see her grant, but. I think she's thinking we might be able to pick up some computers and at no additional cost to us to use that software. So that, that'll be very nice for the, for the county to be able to do that. Thank you. <coughs> Gentlemen, we're ready for item number 10 on our agenda, a grant contract with the Tennessee Department of Health. Uh, Mrs. Nolan? This is the annual contract um, from the state that funds the state portion of the health department and it's Two million one hundred twelve thousand three hundred, and this uh, covers the amount that we budgeted for the thirteen fourteen fiscal year. So moved, Madam Chair. Commissioner Salmon, thank Second. you. <coughs> Seconded by <coughs> Commissioner Schaefer. Was that P. kind of the same for Mr. last P. year? Commissioner P. I'm oh, sorry. It's a. It's a mm -hmm. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Sandlin? Aye. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Ewing? Yes. Next, we have a license agreement with the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation for rental space, item number 11. And this is our state office. Uh, Mayor Burgess? That's just the rental of that space over there where they, uh, <coughs> they do the solar testing. $650 and we have to renew that agreement every year with the state and they're a little late getting that to us unless we need your approval to execute that agreement whenever they send it to us executed. Did we kick them out four months? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, they will pay us. They're just a little behind. 
Motion to approve. Second. Commissioner P, thank you. Seconded by Commissioner Schaefer. <laughs> Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Ely. Yes. Uh, the next item on our agenda uh, is information regarding the concept of constructing a new judicial building. Gentlemen, we don't have any information specifically uh, under that item number 12, but we can go to uh, committee meetings, committee minutes if we need to. Uh, there was a motion from property management uh, for public safety to discuss the concept of a new judicial building and then that was ultimately to come to budget uh, to continue that discussion. Uh, there was considerable discussion in both of those committees uh, and uh, tonight uh, we'll continue that discussion. I'll ask the mayor if he would please uh, review us briefly on uh, the discussion that has happened in those two committees and then tell us what uh, you need uh, uh, from this committee uh, tonight. Okay. Let's sort of revisit this. This has a long, long history. Some of you know we're here before when this history started before I was here, but anyway, we've had two substantial studies, one that was completed in 2002 and one that was completed in 2008 regarding the uh, replacement of our current judicial building and putting in place a new judicial building. And one of the common outcomes of both of those studies you had already made a decision to purchase the uh, land east of our current county clerk's building, which has been done. We own all of that block. And then, of course, what's there is the old health department building, which will continue to stay there. But the balance of the building, I think there was pretty much <coughs> two, uh, consensus agreement that we would put the judicial building there. Um, so we need a judicial building. Talk a little bit more about that, and we, uh, whenever we build a new structure like that, we'll have to meet the codes that, we, that define how many parking spaces we need. So we'll need a new parking garage as well to support that building. It's not completely clear whether there's enough space on the block that I just described to handle both the judicial building and the garage. There is some indication that it might not be sufficient to do that, and there have been through the course of time through these discussions previously that another place that might be considered would be the uh, current parking area of the clerk's building and uh, to put the, a garage there. In the event, that discussion should be open and uh, we'll review that as we actually place the building on the, on the property that we purchased and it may be that we can fit the garage there with it. If we can't, we'll have to come back and make a final determination on that later. So we'll be objective in, in that discussion with respect to that. <clears throat> but we will have to have parking. Okay, what has happened, the 2008 study first developed about six scenarios. And all of these scenarios were based on population growth. And from that, with that population growth, they have taken the, at that time, the caseload, they, extrapolated the caseload based on population growth. It's linear to determine how many uh, courtrooms we need and how much space we need in the building for supporting functions. The building will not have contained in it any space for the office spaces, you might say, for the DA and the public defender, but there will be spaces for those, for those both of those to confer and meet with their clients, etc. but there, we will not furnish office spaces for all of those people that are employees of that particular DA and, and public defender's offices. Okay, now, since this study has been done, our population already is exceeding what we had in these projections in 2008. <clears throat> so if our population is increasing, then that will tell you that our caseload is increasing, and that will tell you that the need for our uh, courts uh, continues to expand. At the conclusion of the 2008 study, a, a separate scenario, scenario seven, was added. Here's the difference between 
scenario four and scenario seven, which were the two finalists, you might say, as far as what was proposed to be done. <coughs> scenario four would build 10 courtrooms and it would shell in one floor that would allow an expansion of four additional courtrooms. So it's, it's a 10 up front and you'd wait a few years, five, 10, whatever you might need to build your next four. Scenario seven, you would build 12 courtrooms and then you would still have your shelled in floor and you could increase that to uh, 16 courts at the appropriate time. All of that to say is <coughs> this, uh, it appears possible and maybe even likely that scenario seven, and that's the property management committee wanted, they came forward with a, uh, I guess you could say a recommendation on scenario seven, but we really want to confirm whether that's needed or necessary or not, but we're gonna to have to do a little bit of additional homework to make sure that happens. That study showed that by 2033, we would be at uh, a population of about 350,000. We already have some current projections that show we're going to exceed 400,000 people by 2035. That being said, our numbers probably will reflect once we sort of update all these numbers, hopefully, whether we go with four or seven, it's likely we're gonna go with seven. But anyway, seven is a number that reflects <coughs> a little bit more than $55 million for the judicial building and a little more than five million for a parking garage. So at some point we're going to have to determine for sure are we going to do this. It's already, we're already overcrowded, have been overcrowded. Uh, this building is not designed. Is Ms. Bowling in here with us? I, am, I have yes. a look. Yes. She, she can come up here and add some of this. And I don't know if Judge Lowry is with us today or not. He's been with us with, uh, previously. And I should have, excuse me for not asking you to join us before even now. She lives in that building every day and she knows the shortcomings that are there structurally, uh, especially in the old two pieces, the coin building, and the old bank building. And she knows the, the limitations that are there with respect to security and the, and the ability for people to enter that building. Um, I think she was probably here when we had to make some major adjustments in scheduling, et cetera, which was before our juvenile judge moved out and which was before youth services moved out. Since they moved out, we were able to provide at least a place for our DA and our public defender to work and meet with their clients. They don't have offices, but they do have one or two little offices where they can meet with clients. And we even had some, a few occasions where the uh, city of Marsburg Fire Marshal, uh, we were basically on the verge of having to evacuate in the building. We were over capacity especially in those corridor spaces. All that to say, we made some improvements short term by moving some people out of that building, but we continue to grow in our caseload and the number of clients that are coming in there. And you can fully see everybody lined up outside that building to get in the building every day over there. Mayor, I've got a couple quick questions if you don't mind me. Okay. I know Schaefer and I have seen your proposal. Who else on the committee here has seen this? Anybody? Charlie, uh, I have Charlie, there's three of us. Well, what I was getting at asking, and, and tonight, what is it you're actually wanting from this committee? Are you just bringing us information? No, I'm going to I'm gonna get to a, a point of asking you for something here, okay? Okay, that's what I was wondering. So, <laughs> this, there were information I, this only. Is just, this or, is all preliminary. This is a little more than information only. We want, understand. We want to keep this discussion going, and I can't keep it going unless we update this information. Do you want to add anything to this? Preliminary <coughs> preamble here. No, I, I do want to confirm that, that this, we're space constrained. And there's been questions in the past and again recently about you know scheduling differently. <coughs> scheduling differently really isn't an option. When the capacity of the courtroom on the first floor is 65 people and you have a docket of, five, of four or 500 people there's not enough time in a business day, even if you pull it into an evening, to really accommodate all of the people that actually come to court. On our fourth floor, again, it's the same thing. The capacity of those courtrooms is about 75. We, um, in, in last month's um, grand jury, we had 190 indictments. That's not necessarily 190 people, but that's still all of those people 
And that arraignment day, uh, my, my chief deputy is here. Can, she was here till 7 or 8 o'clock at night on that particular arraignment day, getting through all of that docket. So we can speak to uh, different ways to schedule things, but the space doesn't exist to, to schedule differently any longer. And not to mention the fact that when you look at, say, a domestic docket, your victims and the perpetrators are in the same hallway, in the same space, waiting for that. I mean, they're not, they're not, there's not a place for them to be separate. So your, your victims and your perpetrators are in that same space. And it's just, it's just not a comfortable place for the citizens of the And our, and our, and our inmates are brought into the same space as our public are yeah. occupied. There's not a secure way to separate those folks. So, um, scenario four, initially, we'll see if this holds true when we update this, uh, the data which is, that would reflect that population increases. It was said that that would satisfy our needs to approximately 2030 to 2040. And scenario seven would be 10 to 15 years beyond it. We want to build a building that would, I hope, will last to 2040 to 2050. Uh, we know we're shelling into four additional uh, courts, rooms. So all that to say, there are some serious capacity issues. There are some serious safety issues. And it appears that this may be one and maybe the only time we've had an opportunity to do this within the structure that's available within our uh, our debt service revenue stream and, our, and the balance of our whole uh, debts that we have for all of the other things that we're currently responsible for. Okay, saying all that to say, you, I'll get, I'll get Ms. Nolan talked about it, but I'm going to go to your point, that Mr. Uh, your question, where am I going with all of this? Five years have elapsed since we uh, have actually done this study, and we're already exceeding the projections that we had at that point in time as far as our population and our caseload. Mm -hmm. So we want to update these numbers so we can confirm the validity of them, so we can focus on whether we can are going to have to go to scenario seven or not, and we'll know exactly how many dollars within a closer proximity it's going to take to do this. So uh, what I want to you, for you to consider is to appropriate an additional $30,000 to update this study, to take her data that she currently has, bring it forward to what she's actually experiencing, project forward our more realistic updated projections on our population to again create exactly how many courts we need, how many square feet we need, and, uh, the, and how far this is going to carry us out into the future. That will take us 45 to 60 days to get that done if we, get an, if we execute an agreement to do that. And then at that point, we will have an update on these numbers that we've shown poverty management, we've shown public safety, and it will confirm our space needs, it will confirm our cost needs and our projections. Now, these costs may be different, they may be better, they may be worse, but in any event, there's a lot of moving pieces here, and we're not in a position to ask you for $55 million for the building and $5 million for the garage until we reaffirm our numbers and come back with some more data that we're pretty sure is current and reasonable. So that's where I want to go with this discussion tonight. Well, what's, what's bothering me about what you just said is, first of all, I'm going to say, I've looked at these different options, and seven seems the most viable to me, which is you know adding the most <laughs> most uh, courtrooms and extending it out for a longer period, to say 2000 or, or 50, 2050, which seems like the more reasonable thing. And the question I asked in public safety, and I, I like the answer that I got, was why now? And now is because we got the wind, and I think well, Lisa's going to talk to that without having possibly a, a tax increase at this time to be able to get this done. And most of us have been here. I mean, we were here when we got the property and we, got, we know why we got it. And we need them, we, we had a problem, we need to take care of it. So what's bothering me about you asking for another 30,000, if we all agreed, hey, we want option seven, do we still need to get these numbers? Or you, the updated numbers are you needing? Are they construction costs or are they the options on, on 
the number of people that we're going to service because we can see already that the number of people in this county has, has grown so much. You know, I don't, I don't see any reason to revisit that. We're already exceeding a lot of the numbers that are there. Well, I, I still would like somebody to tell us that our scenario seven is, is the most rational approach. I mean, I don't want us to do that if we really can stay with four. I mean, I think the likelihood of that happening is not very great. I think we're going to have to move up, and I agree with you because I want it to give us the capacity out as far as we can get it, and I think probably that's what it's going to take. But I'd hate for this to this fifty-five thousand to turn into sixty thousand dollars six months from now, and I, you not have known that in advance. Okay, so I think we need to spend that money to reaffirm our dollars and our space needs. There's all kinds of um, hedge factors, you might say, as far as contingency numbers, and mm -hmm. already built into this. I mean, there's some ten percent on the on the cost factors already built in. So we're probably going to still have some contingency, but I, I don't want us to come back and say we need another five million or ten million dollars. Well, and I was going to ask it with the current buildings that are over there. Is this uh, with tearing that down? You know that 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 cost within this cost of the demolition and well, prep and everything the, the for the land. The first piece of money that Lisa sort of projected was eight million dollars, mm -hmm. and that's that's probably enough money to tear down the structures that we purchased and condemned over right. there. Right. And that's probably enough money for the design fees and and those things. So, and probably enough money to build the garage. So we think we've got. Some of that in her first projections that she's already And we're still looking at what, 18 months, two years on final build out anyway. Oh, well, final build out, it'd be at least two years, but yeah. But uh, we could that's have. That's what I'm saying. You know, we it, couldn't. It, we're it, talking two years down the road whenever we say go. So that's time is yeah. still clicking, and we're five years down the road already into this situation. Well, we're, we're 11 years already down the road on this situation. It was discussed for a while before we bought the property. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah this has yeah, been yeah. being discussed for 15, 16, yeah. 17 years. But I'm talking about actual purchase of the yeah. property yeah. and everything. And, you know, I'm and the ju present judicial building, the more crowded it gets, well, we have just we had fire marshal problems this last year that uh, we juggled schedules and well, all. That's what I was going to ask, too. Is on, our, uh, the standpoint, sooner or later here, probably sooner if we don't do something, we there's going to be courts getting yeah. involved another way. And our plan on our existing judicial building, you know, are they still the same and switching some offices over and utilizing that? I mean, we had talked about we, even dramatic stuff of tearing it down and building something else and all this sort of stuff. I so think we talk about moving out of the Goldstein's building. The Goldstein's building's a nightmare. Yes, really. yes, it the is. The five-story building, that's the, quote, current judicial mm -hmm. building needs to stay there. Mm -hmm. it, it has a little life left into it, and we need to seriously consider moving things like what's in the Goldstein building, right. building codes, planning, etc. Um, there will be needs, and there are other needs even beyond that. I mean, so I think it could be converted for our own internal use, and that, that's what we should plan on. The other two buildings that we mentioned, the Cohen building and the bank building, I may be the only one that believes this, but I, I don't think it has any redeeming value, and I think we ought to pull those down. And she, she probably feels worse about this than I do. Just a little bit. Building on the northwest corner. It's, it's the smaller piece. It's an interesting building. Let's just say that. The old bank part. The old bank part. Yeah. Yes. Well, the coin part is behind the bank part. Yes, right. Right. Yes. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And just to add, on, on this particular study, the numbers that were estimated for 2015 caseloads, we hit those caseload numbers in 2011. So we have, there has to be a reanalyzation of the actual cases that, that are flowing through the building in order to confirm that this scenario seven will actually still fit for us. And those numbers were generated in 2008? They were generated in 2008 and 2011. So they thought it was going to be a seven year growth, we did in three. Correct. That's scary. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I was talking about. Yeah. Is, is you know we already know we're hitting the projected numbers. Well, our numbers might be so off base. We might need something besides seven. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I've talked a little bit to the consultants that prepared this. They 
they think we're probably going to be okay. One of them thought we might still be okay on scenario four. The other one was definitely thought we would we'll be at scenario seven. Is that where four is <laughs> building out later some of the other floors or something? Well, <laughs> one floor would be filled in on both scenarios, and you could add four more courts on that floor at the appropriate time. That usually turns out, and that's a great idea. Yeah. In I concept. Know. We but, did that with this one. I remember but, we finished that last floor. But, you, but yeah. two years in, somebody's going to need some office space. Yeah, absolutely. And you're going to go around <coughs> making an office space, and then 15 years in, you're going to say, well, that's office space. We can't make courtroom out of that. So I would say whatever you shell out of there will get used 10 times quicker than you think it will, yeah. and it awesome. won't ever be used for what the original plan was. I've been involved in other places where that's never worked out. Because if somebody sees space, they go, ooh, yeah. we can put this up there. Yeah. Right? You know, we'll get a grant for something, and they have to have a place to put them. So. If if we do this update, we probably could give you a report on it by your December budget meeting. It's it'll take forty five to sixty days, and then you could seriously determine at that point, are you going to go forward with the with the project or not? Mm. But we somehow we're going to have to replace this building. So you're asking for thirty thousand dollars and it's coming from on the side. On the side. We could Second. take it out of my miscellaneous No. no. <laughs> 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 I feel strongly that we would do that if we had the development tax maybe or well, other uh, for that money. Uh, Sir it's I thirty thousand <laughs> Yeah. I'm recommending that we take 30000 from the unassigned fund balance and move to uh, the mayor's budget, other contracted services for 30000 And we're going to have a full debate on this next week at the commission, full commission. Yeah, we just a minute because we come to the full commission. So yes. then, this is a drop in the bucket compared to, say, the 45 or $50 million, but it's still $30,000. Right. We don't need to spend this money if we're not going to seriously consider moving forward with the building. All right. I don't, I, don't I don't know what your other option is. I don't know what your other option is, but like I said, we don't need to spend this money, and everybody's like, I'm not going to spend the money right. for, the big, for the big tickets. So. You need that motion on it tonight? Yes, we yes, make that motion. I second the motion. Commissioner Jernigan seconded by Commissioner Schaefer. Anyone? Yes, they look like If we, yeah. Yeah, I'm better looking. <laughs> if we go in agree to spend this 30000 what exactly am I getting for my money? We're, we're going to give you, here's what you're going to get. And, and the reason I'm asking this is because I'm ready, personally, you to go ahead, ahead with seven. seven. Yeah. I don't want to spend money that I don't have to spend if I've right. already looked at it. And, and I've determined, just from looking at these numbers, that, you know, we're we're spending our wheels here. If we think that those numbers are going to be lower, now the caseloads may reflect something. Well, my, my point in, in second in the motion is these numbers are at, in 08. So we're talking about here it is 13. And truthfully, I mean, I don't want to vote on something on a plan number seven that I hadn't heard totally about seven yet. But, you know, it, there may be a, there be a, may be another eight, you know, a plan number eight that we have to do because of the numbers we have in 13. Uh, and that might be in the middle of four and seven. I don't know, but I'm just saying. Uh, but I'm also like uh, Will here, the, you know, election year's next year. And everybody's conscious, you know, about voting for something uh, with, a, with a price tag on it. This is something that's been looked at for years and years and years. And uh, so it's, <coughs> you know, we're two years down the road from opening up the door for service. So, or more. <laughs> so it just you know there's it's something we've been looking at and there's the need that's been there you know is this the right time and financially to do it and that's something that <coughs> 21 of us are going to have to talk about but you've got some definite no's in there before you even start so a little bit more direct is the question we're going to have to spend some money more even more than 30 thousand. we will have to based on the caseload and based on how many square feet we build we're going to have to give over to whoever we select as an architect a lot of information. And this is just part of that information gathering process. We're going to have to hand off to that person 
substantial amount of detail and just just the first little piece of the detail he needs to be handed when they start putting the pencil to the paper well I, that's my point all along is yes I know we got this amount of money is I don't want to throw thirty thousand out the window that I don't need to throw out. Mm. If I can keep that thirty thousand and put it toward architect <coughs> for this new building, that's what I'd rather do. So I basically what I want to know is what am I getting for thirty thousand well, dollars that I don't already have or know if I've already made up my mind I want to go to section seven or or option well, seven. You're gonna to have to do this and this is this is a, a work that's going to have to be done by somebody that's not the architect. It's going to have to be done by some sort of firm that has the experience over many of these kinds of projects to define and determine precisely exactly how this space should be allocated between her office, between the other offices, between the judges, between the courtroom. All of that work, some of that's already been done here, but we're going to have to. It's got to be a lot better refined, and we're going to have to do even more than the thirty. Probably before we actually hand it off to an architect, we would have to hand him a package that's really complete about these definitions of these spaces and, the, and the, how we want these things to be accommodating the needs. So uh, I'm not being really clear, I know, but I'm just telling you it's going to take this upfront prior to putting the pencil on the paper by an architect to provide this kind of detailed information for them to be able to have a program, uh, a programmatic kind of approach taken how they're going to actually uh, lay out each each space and just to add in in this original study there was there are differences between the way business works in the general sessions court and the way business works in the circuit court and and the flow of people through those so this particular study when it was originally done analyzed that space utilization how long is a person in the court in general sessions versus in that courtroom in the circuit court there's a, there's a definite time difference between that and there was some analyzation that was done in that original study about that when we update those numbers for the caseloads that's going to update what our real space utilization for those areas is so that's why it's important to actually get these numbers updated so that we know are, the, are these courts that they've designated out for sessions and for civil because there's different areas that they've designated for these different types of courts are they really viable are they really viable spaces for this um, do we need another uh, a, or a larger general sessions court mm -hmm. do we need a smaller space here that's the kind of information we would get with an update of these numbers what are we going to do if the contingency floor comes out to be 55 million and seven 60 million and the parking garage is six million well, then have to deal with that yeah, exactly. yeah but i mean yeah. that, yeah. that's when you determine yeah. is there enough capacity to do this and are you comfortable mm -hmm. doing it? well is this part of a package deal or we're we just going to worry about ghosting building later i mean not right now we're going to well, we concentrate on this we're going to concentrate on this, on, on this. I, I'm knowing full well that we'll develop a place. Because we'll have to do some renovation over so here. we're two years away from leaving that building over right, anyway. Right, so right. we've got a pretty good bit of time available right. to, for property management to struggle through all of that okay. discussion. Okay. I still then want like, to cloud the, the water there, but still with that mindset of this is going to happen too. Yes. You know. This isn't like building a school. We know how to build schools. Absolutely. Build them all the time. You just pull your plans out and adjust them to the site and elevations. And all. I mean, <laughs> this is, I mean, you got to go find a like size city with a judicial system similar to us and look at when they built one. And, and I remember there were talks before about what other communities across the southeast had built and what they built, but it's. I bet Mr. Carter could come up with an idea, though. <laughs> <laughs> we could move everybody out of Central and make Central their judicial building or something like that. If we could build this at the same per square foot cost that they're going right. to schools for, yeah. you guys would bless the whole project tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's going to be a lot more. It's going to be as, maybe as much as twice as much per square foot. And the, the parking garage that's connect of course be used for clerk's office and everything that goes on there as well as the judicial building so there would be a walking across the street or a bridge type something other going to the building or if the structure is put over there that's true 
we still want to be objectively reviewed. Or that street, part of that street could be even cut off. And I doubt if you can be able to close that street, it'd have to be an overhead uh, connecting link, likely. Okay. But we still want to see possibly if we can put it all of it on the same mm -hmm. building with the, with the main structure. And we, we need a little more time to really right. review that and lay the buildings out right. on the properties. Right. Oh, well, we got some issues with Rover over there too, with uh, people coming over there and using our, well, the facilities not properly and stuff. And we got an issue there. That's a different story. Madam Chairman, I call for questions. Oh, sure. Because we, we had okay. the motion an hour and a half. Okay. okay. The uh, the question has been called for. Uh, call the roll, please. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Commissioner P? No. Commissioner Sandlin? Aye, because we're voting on the question, right? Do you know, I think I, uh, I, I should have. I should have asked us, I, I guess, to have a, a vote on. Uh, well, the one he called for uh, question, that redoes Yes, uh, I apologize. I think I did not follow Robert's rules Five of minutes. order. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Schaefer called for the question. That was seconded by Commissioner Jernigan. All in favor of, of calling for the question, please say aye. Aye. Uh, yes, I think. Uh, did we have uh, one no? Okay. I'm just a loud no. So, so, okay. <laughs> so the, uh, the, the motion carries yeses. that we will call for the question, and now we are ready to vote on the motion. Start over. Yeah. Please call the roll. Commissioner Baum. Yes. Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Commissioner Jordan. Yes. Commissioner P. No. Commissioner Sandlin. Aye. Commissioner Schaefer. Well, Miss Bowling, with her presentation, convinced me on the, that we need to look at the size <laughs> of the courtroom. So yes. Mr. Ely. Yes. Okay. I, want to, I do want to repeat that I'm not against doing this. I'm ready to go ahead with the option seven. I just don't. You didn't convince yeah. me that I need to spend thirty thousand dollars to be told what I'm already seeing. That's what it looks like to me. It looks like we're throwing money away that I don't need to throw away. That's why I can put it at architect fees. So. I understand. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do you have anything else on this on this yeah. item? Okay, gentlemen, is there anything Thank else you. that needs to come before our committee? Any other business? Thank you. We are adjourned. <laughs>